please make them good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thanks again um, to all of you for being here today. Um, I was interested to read in Mr. Tonemaker's testimony. He said direct marketing drives every planting decision on the farm. And, and I know that you started at farmer's markets and as a result started meeting chefs, got into restaurant sales and CSA, um, expanded the number of farmer's markets significantly and then rebalanced your sales strategy and cut back on the number of farmer's markets. Um, and then got into value-added products. And so I wanted, wondered, starting with you, Mr. Tonemaker, if you can discuss a little bit about how your marketing strategies changed from the early 80s um, when you were first um, starting in this area and through your transition to organic to where you are today and, and how that process has evolved. Well, um, like we said in the testimony that the, the indirect wholesale system kind of failed us in the fact that there was no real incentive for the uh, wholesale distribution to provide good returns to the farmer. The farmer, as is right now, retains ownership of the fruit all the way to the grocery store when the person buys it. Yet we all, and we have all, um, the, the wholesalers get all the money out first. So essentially we send the fruit to the warehouse and then they take all the money that's selling and the distribution, all those guys get their money out. Whatever's left over, the farmer gets. So we changed to um, going direct market to the, to the restaurants so that we could keep that, like to say, to keep the part of the carcass back on the farm. Uh, we started the farmer's markets and we were able to uh, uh, meet the chefs and started developing our outreach and realized that these guys wanted specific things they couldn't get on a regular basis and then we expanded. Right now we grow about 300 varieties of peppers. We have 16 varieties of sweet cherries. We're adding a few more so we could extend our growing season. and. Um, that way we harvest cherries for about a month and a half. We grow about 48 kinds of peaches. So we start picking in uh, early July and pick all the way into late September, uh, just to make it so we could direct market a longer period of time and keep our farm going. Mm -hmm. We transitioned to organic, uh, started in 1997. We we're fully organic in 2003 in our farm in Eastern Washington. And we're hoping to certify organic in our farm in Woodenville this spring. With the idea that it was a good niche for us, not that, um, my grandmother lived to be 100 years old when we were a conventional farm, and she died in 2003. So there's, we really have, uh, there's nothing we don't like, like they said, we don't want to combat either times farming methods. There's definitely pros and cons for each, but with us and our direct marketing, a lot of the chefs were looking for it and asking for it, and it's just worked out well in our situation with direct contact with the consumer to be able to certify organic. And that's helped us in our wholesale sales with selling to Treetop, which is a major juice producer in Washington, they're co-op, and routinely we get returns with juice quality or peeler apples, which essentially cut up for apple pie fillings and things, of a higher return than we would for fresh market fruit. So uh, being organic has really helped us in that aspect, uh, in addition to direct contact with consumers. Um, as far as uh, uh, the farmers markets we started at one point we were doing 18 a week now we're last summer we did eight and this summer we'll probably be down at six or seven uh, just the success of the farmers markets we go to and they being able to specialize and really emphasize on those has helped a lot we do a lot of weekly share boxes actually a pretty small amount considering s some of our local competitor you know people that do hundreds we do about 150 but we do a lot of restaurant sales and we have the farm in Woodenville, which we have a, a lot of direct sales going there to the people. And we're able to do some agritourism and some educational plantings coming up here. That's in the, what we're striving for is to connect the community locally with their agricultural source. Have others um, had a similar experiences in terms of how things have evolved and they've transitioned from where they started in terms of direct marketing to where you are today? Go ahead. Well, we are. We started again in terms of we have a very small um, our pastured poultry business, and for and we've only been in business for three full years, so we're very sh short. Um, but for us, the opportunity uh, has been largely 
in restaurants and farm stores and institutions. And that, to us, again, we're in a part of the country where there is a lot of, um, a huge number of farmers markets. Uh, I would echo some of the challenges that Mr. Eilers has mentioned in terms of farmers markets and that, that does, uh, it has presented challenges and opportunities. But for us, we've seen the, the real growth in farm stores and in institutions. Thank you. My time's expired. I yield back, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Ms. Devaney. Uh, now